The Marching Roundtable's appearance on tour with the Blue Coats was made possible by Stanberry Uniforms, found at stanberry.com. Hey everybody, this is Tim uh, from the Marching Roundtable. I am at the Blue Coats. We're in Katy, Texas, are we? One of the most impressive people I know, Greg Legola. Greg, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. So I got to tell you, I thought last year's show was one of my favorite shows of all time, but this year's show, I think you've, you've topped it. Like, the congratulations on the success of the show. Well, thank you very much. Of course, on behalf of the design team, thank you. So we're having a great time. So the, you can see the core behind us back there uh, on the field doing visual practice. It's, it's like really, really hot here in Texas. Yes. We'll last a little bit while, but not too long. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love the show. So thank you for having a conversation with me. Last year in Indy, we talked about how you had taken all the uniforms, the, the, the what they're wearing. Everybody had a unique look. Mm. Everybody had a different combination of patterns. Mm -hmm. I feel like you've done that this year and then sort of like amplified it so is that true did you see that last year and say man that worked let's go somewhere else let's go bigger let's go yeah pretty much yes actually um it wasn't uh it wasn't something intentional you know coming off of last year i mean there were a lot of open possibilities of course because the show hadn't been designed yet so i didn't know but i thought if i was to go down this road again i could potentially potentially take it even a step further so you will notice with the uniforms this year, um, it's still individual, but I kind of went a little bit more, um, I took more risks with pattern mixing, uh, with value ranges in within the color, um, and there is a bit more, um, there's a bit more disparity in all of that, so whereas last year the values that I ended up using uh, kind of all blended together and it was it was a bit um, quieter I suppose or it, they, all of the patterns and colors last year fell oh. into each other right right this year there's a few you know if you want to focus on a certain um, combinations of print or, or or color or novelty you you'll see it and you can you can see how it stands apart from from the person standing next to the, that particular performer but my goal was hopefully to make the ensemble still look like they all, be all, all belong together with a slight bit more variation uh, without going so far that I'm telegraphing anybody in. So did you way. make the... Okay, I think this is just genius. Like, I, I can't tell you how amazing I think it is. So did you see last year and go, okay, that really worked and now we can, we can stretch it more? Yeah. Or was it like this show needs something wilder? No, I mean, I think what last year was what it needed to be for that situation. Right, and right, I think, right. Um, okay. I think, I, I think once the program started to come together, and I knew what the source material was going to be, then I thought, you know what? I think, I think it's okay. I think I can actually uh, uh, piggyback off of what we had done last year, and 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 simply just take it uh, slightly further along yeah. on that on that idea. And, it, and, and uh, it works. And who knows? And who knows what goes <laughs> on from here? You never know. But, well, uh, so yeah. so I love. I loved the, fat, the feel and the palette of last year's show. This year is, is like brighter, a little bit more mm -hmm. vibrant. Uh, clearly makes sense with what the show is, what mm -hmm. the concept is. Um, was that super fun? Like, like, yeah, th like to, yeah. to figure out how wild can the pattern be on somebody's pants? Like, like what's the process you go through to fun figure it out? And fun and nerve-wracking. And, and, <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, there's just those moments where I just, you, you look at it, then you wake up the next day, look at it again, and you give it some time to sort of like breathe, and then you look at it again. I had to do, there was an editing process for sure, um, uh, but you know, again, the context in which we work is so big, uh, and so no matter what I do up close and personal with the, the colors and patterns and, and tweaking those kinds of values and um, and humor, Use, I, there's just an element of um, the unknown, and there's an element of surprise, and I always hope it's a happy surprise in the end. But well, I mean, you I, talked about that I last year, how the, the, I, the, I you weren't exactly. sure that if you had the right gray, you thought you had the right. I don't get gray. a chance to test it. Like, there's no real testing. It's you see it, you can sort of test a few patterns. You can get back from it a few you know, twenty feet, but I'm never really back from it three hundred feet. I don't live in a stadium, so you know, it's like I kind of try to make some educated guesses. And so well, that's very that's highly I'm... educated guesses. Well, so so how so um, 
what would be the what would be the takeaway for those of us at home trying to do this on our level? Like we we can't produce something on the blue coats level, but I still might take some chances with some of the costuming for say my guard or something mm. like like how how do you how do you know if you're in the right wheelhouse? Or or do you just or is this one of those lessons in take a chance and see what happens and maybe it won't work but I, I think it. I think you start with some knowns like you know that if you kind of keep a color range within a certain context either warm or cool or even within those ranges you make uh, you, you make some selections as well and start to like uh, eliminate maybe things that okay. that might not work okay. you kind of start with the basic ideas okay. of color uh, mixing and matching and, and uh, the, idea, the idea of monochromatics you know um, uh, ranges and those, you know, kind of basic ideas, you sort of, I would say, you know, you kind of start there, and then the extent to which you can, you know, kind of go riff off of that is where you get into, I would say, you know, more risky stuff. But it, there's, without, without some risk for me, I have to have something that makes me feel like, I'm not sure what that's going to be, but I like that. No, I, lo- I love that. I, and, and... I love it, you know, but at the time, <laughs> I like it when it <laughs> works out, but... Well, Right, right, but this is what I think. I think people should take chances. Yeah, yeah you do. You know what I mean? Like, it, we're putting on a show. It's supposed to be fun. The worst thing that can happen is that, and I thought to myself, the worst thing that can happen is something doesn't look quite right, and I can change it. I mean, and what happens is, in this case, um, I, the way I did this, I actually, it got quite complicated. And p- part of the fun of this one, actually, and I don't want to bore people to sobs with this, but, it, you know, you get... Uh, it got to be where I had to sort of figure out what the maximum number of solid uh, colors I could have and the maximum number of novelty uh, prints and patterns I can have. And so I took, once I figured out what the, the, the max was, given the number of performers and not driving Stanbury insane with individual <laughs> Which, cutting. by the way, Stanbury, awesome job. And thanks for sponsoring my trip here, the little yes. side. No, so, yes. so yes. how did you come up with the number? Well, how did you figure out that number? Mm, it, I, how did you know how many different it was just varieties? Math. It was math. It was just, uh, I was looking at some of the numbers and I started with what I thought could work and then I just did the permutations from the number of um, separate fabrications and worked out the chart so that I could get as many combinations of two as I could get so that each person was unique um, unto themselves and in terms of the pattern mixing. And so that was actually kind of fun. But also what that led... So I needed to do it, though, for my own purposes, but I also needed it needed to do it for the production team at Stanford because... Uh, you know, like I need right. to, I need to be able to normalize a little bit of this in terms right. of uh, production. Right. And right. so it, it turns sense. out that I, ne- I never, I tried not to use any particular pattern or color more than I think it was either, I can't remember, was it nine? One was came out to nine when it came out to eleven, something like that. So I thought, well, okay. So what that means is that if worst comes to worst, I could recut nine pieces. Okay. You know, something like right. that. So if if something one of them, like, some, for some reason, doesn't look didn't right. Feel right. Didn't feel or it was right. Or it was a little bit too far off of the... Uh, off of the scale, uh, uh, then I, I I wouldn't have too much. I would have some recourse. Like eleven pieces is not, it's not a disaster. And, so <laughs> can I get venture a guess that you haven't had to I, read? Not really. No. I mean, there's no small. I mean, so small smart. You're so smart. No, but you have a lot of experience lucky, in this world. Yeah. Thank you. But some some, some small. All right, yeah. so I love that they're blue this year again. Mm, yes. I, I like the blue coats blue, mm-hmm. and I love that the the color palette of the guard with the is it just orange and yellow, or is there red in there too? Like there's all uh, it's, kinds of those shades. Of it's those all colors, it's right? uh, orange, it, primarily orange, but it goes into the red oranges, the yellow oranges. Um, there's a few I did. I also um, did some dark, like burgundies, a little bit to ground it, or to have my to have a little bit of more depth in the color range with okay. the guard. Okay. But I also, if you notice, I used um, the bluish and the turquoisey kinds of colors from the core. Um, I used that as uh, defining um, textures in the guard. What do you mean by defining textures? Like in the I, guard? so I, I I did some outlining work on oh, okay. the blue, on the on the guard in the colors oh, of the okay. core. Okay. So I there was a relationship so it pulls it together yeah so how did you come up with the orange I mean I know it's on the opposite of the yeah, color it's wheel. A compliment. It's and, a you compliment. know, I haven't, well, listen, I haven't, I, it's one of my favorite colors, but right. also it felt like, given the source material in terms yeah. of the music, right. um, some of that had to do a little bit with the Eastern influence um, okay. uh, as far okay. as some of the music that we're playing uh, from from the Beatles, of course, and um, I took, I look at, 
looked at that palette from their period when they were into the, the guru and the, right. the ashrams and all that stuff. So and that I, takes you into that sort of it took me into that Middle East, Eastern, Eastern Indian yeah, kind of like yeah. paisley yeah. patterns. That's why you'll see paisleys on some of the uh, guard uniforms. Mm. So I thought, well, that's kind of a cool palette and makes sense with it, and it, it, it will complement the core. It's bright, it's contrasting, and uh, why not? And it's really happy. Like the, happy. The, 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 there is just the happiest vibe coming right. off the field. Well, yeah, it, it, it was something we were but, hoping to. But that's the achieve. power of the colors and the patterns. Mm. So did you think this needs to be happy or vibrant or? Mm, no, I thing? want it. I want it vibrancy for sure. Yeah, I did no want vibrancy. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, somewhat maybe a reaction to last year because we were a bit more. We were softer and more subtle in terms of the core. But so I thought, eh, I want to I want to push this a little bit more and see what that feels like. And it felt it felt right with the material. So I thought, yeah. I think we're going to try this and see what happens. Well, it's such a home run. Can you talk about the black and white characters? They're clearly defining the different sections of the show. Why are they included? So that's interesting. I, I kind of like why take the color away? Mm. What's what? How do? How does that? I know how it works, but can you tell me why it works? This was that was a bit a cart before the horse. So like I didn't, you know, I don't think any of us really had planned on um, at that point in the season. Uh, characters um, so I was doing my sketching and I just decided it literally was just something like oh I want to make something in black and white and do something fun kind of like not expecting it to mean anything and then what happened was it was it sort of was an accident I, I, I was doing them and I thought well let me do some more well that's kind of cool well maybe that could be something I don't know and so I printed it out and you know, in some of the early design meetings, we looked at them, mm. and, and there was some reaction from the from the team. And I thought, uh, I thought, oh yeah, well maybe. Um, I guess we could possibly use them. And then it just sort of evolved. Mm. Like they were, okay. they, they got excited by the yeah. look of them, and then I started to tweak the looks a little bit to sort of then to, to sort of suit the the the, 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 the um, what do you call the um, musical selections. So then. That's it was not planned. It was sort of an accident, and then it, it initially, in terms of just the the design, and then we thought, oh, we can incorporate these, and I think this could be really cool. And the black, and I had rendered them in black and white because I was drawing all this color. So I thought, oh, right. I need a break, you know, from the color. And so then I did that, and then so it kind of became a, a thing. It be kind, it, it became sort of the right choice, I thought, to as a as a as a what do you call. A, a stark contrast to the rest of the Well, colors. it's sort of like a little palette cleanser. It's sort of like... Yeah, I, but and so, stand out. So it's know. interesting to me that it serves the same purpose in the show that it sort of did for you as you were working. Yeah, kind of. It did. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, and then it just... You know, it, like I said, a lot of the design team, the visual guys were like, hey, wait a second, I like the way that looks. You know, um, what can we do with that? And then I we, we morph them into these characters that lead... Off the tunes. like the different sections, yeah, the yeah. Sergeant Pepper, the Eleanor Rigby, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also think it's really cool how the the front ensemble is wearing sort of like two different things, but that works. So, like, how does that work? Well, Why does that work, Greg? Like, it's it, so color. great. It's just color, and it just uh, all goes together. It's color, and it's uh, you know, there's there's certain elements of from one that are on the other, design, stylistic. Um, uh, so there, uh, there motifs are motifs that um, are on each of the pieces. Yeah, that... like so. There's like the suit, the the. Um, Embroidery work on the Sergeant Pepper kind of looks on the Mala players, on Marimbas, and um, so then I took some of that looping, those looping details, and then had that printed on the balance of the pit. So we decided, we, I think pretty early on, we decided that we wanted to capture that Sergeant Pepper look because it's such a perfect blend of the Beatles source material, and there. Uh, Using that that in the on Sgt. Pepper's um, album, so I thought, well, that's well, it's sort of like the it's the marching. It's the, it's the tie it's the in, thing. yeah, it's the tie, perfect yeah. tie in. So yeah. we thought, well, of course, of course, that has to be registered, and so we did it for the for one section of the pit, um, and Stanbury cool. did an amazing job on yeah. on making those because that's you know they're co that's a real. Taylor. That's sort of real in their whale, whale house. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. more, much more traditional. I mean, we don't make too many of those anymore, you know, for a lot of bands. So it was kind of like pulling some things out of the archives, which was fun. So um, 
Should I ask you about the props, or should I wait and ask that to when I talk to Michael? I think you should ask Michael because that's I, about the I, set. I think that the set yeah. is so beautiful too. It's an amazing job. Um, I do want to mention how much I loved the Winter Guard and all that yellow, like that. I, again, another breath of fresh air. I just loved that, and that was your work too. I right? must be going through a color period. No, I yeah, love it though. I'm so <laughs> it makes me so happy. As someone who used to do earth tones like like crazy, but yeah, I don't know. It was just the same thing. I was like. I just wanted. I'm responding to it, and you know, when oh, I, I listen to the it. music, I'm th- I'm thinking. I just want to see it. I want to see some color right now. God knows, like having said that, I'll be in browns in two years. But who knows? <laughs> well, but knows? I don't know. You know, are you yeah. finding color in your other work as well? Are you sort of in a colorful place? Not so much. No. It's in, just this is what the show sort yeah, of said. In my you. fashion work, I'm much more, mm, I'm much more monochromatic and somber. You know, whites, greens, blacks. But this uh, this yeah. this activity allows you to yeah, be sort of yeah. playful, yeah, right? It does. It does. It it's does. so it's such a home run. Like it's yeah, it's like that. I mean it's just I'm so impressed with the work. Um, has it been a fun project overall? Yeah, yeah of like, course. Stressful, but always fun. Yeah. Always so fun. so it's weird because you're in you're, you're doing this like super fun creative work and it's also like the stakes are high. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how do you balance that in your head? You just do it? Uh, you uh, Listen, I'm surrounded by an amazing, uh, you know, organization from the top all the way down um, and the design team as well. We always have each other's backs in terms of whatever risks we want to take. And it's always a very, you know, it's a cliche to say, you know, the safe space, you know, but it is. It's a very safe environment. A safe place to take a risk. To take a risk and to be supported and to be able to reach out to people and say, hey, I'm not sure. What do you think? And it's just, uh, that makes it all, that makes it all somewhat easier. The risk is still there, but you feel like you've got people supporting your choices. I wish I knew, like, I know that you're like a genius in all this, no, Greg, but, but like, how, how do you take these wild chances, do these crazy things, and I, and make me feel so happy and comfortable with it? Like, that to me is the real trick. Mm. It's, it's like a lot of people would, it seems like I should be put off. But instead, I just, you've totally won me over to, again. Well, I, like, like, I, I don't know if that's a ridiculous question I'm to ask. I'm glad but, to hear it, but I... Uh, but, but I think it's a real, it's it's quite an accomplishment. Well, that, I, like, I mean, people are so in love with the show. And I feel like, of course, I think Doug's arrangements are just ridiculous. Amazing, yeah. Just absolutely yeah. stellar. But I feel like the way it looks makes me feel good. It makes me happy. It makes me want to love the show. I'm so enjoying what the blue coats are doing. I'm glad to hear it. I mean, really, I'm having a blast. We are too. And I feel like the core's having the time of their life. Like it's a show that yeah. you just feel like, man, they are having so much fun. It's an amazing group, and they are having fun. And, and I, that's, uh, yeah. I love that. Like that's what I want to see. Yeah. The last thing I want to say is mm-hmm. I'm so impressed. Congratulations to your husband Joseph, nominated for an Emmy for Fosse Vernon. It's amazing work. Like, very such proud a of talented him. pair of. Of guys, like amazing. Well, yeah, his is he excited? I hope that by the oh my god, yeah, yeah, Yeah. sure. I mean, it's uh, it's It's... fantastic. Um, it was one of his. It's yeah, one of his earlier, uh, not earlier, but uh, you know, he's been designing now for a few years. I mean, he's been in the industry for a long time, and now he's really coming into his own and doing a lot of projects. And um, the Fosse Verdon was a dream project. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, He and it was so fantastic. Loves the area. He knows all the work um, because he's a huge fan of all the work. So it was so great cool. for him. So we're very happy, and uh, we're going out on the 14th, I think, of September. Yay! We'll see what happens. Well, congratulations to him anyway. Please, I, I met him last year in Indy. It was mm. so great for him to say hello to me, and just wanted to say congratulations to him. Thank you so much. I'll Vicariously pass it on. through you. I will pass it on. Um, again, thank you for the great work you're doing and for sharing your fashion and art expertise with our activity. I love that people like yourself who are working at such a high level are still giving to us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It means a lot to us that we are in it and love it that you're bringing that level to us. I appreciate that. Thank you. you, Like, really, I really think it's very, very special that that you're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for taking time to talk to me. You're you're wonderful. Of course. Thank you for having me. Find other interviews and videos from top DCI designers, instructors, and marchers, behind-the-scenes videos, interviews, and podcasts from winter camps, spring training, traveling during the season, and performances, all at marchingartseducation.com slash DCI-2019. The Marching Roundtable is proud to be an official media partner of Drum Corps International.